Hello, this is Sin City Preacher. Welcome back. Today the subject is homosexuality. Now, as many of you know, I am a street preacher, and because I've spent a lot of time preaching in the streets, I have met and become acquainted with many other street preachers. And I found that uh, there are some street preachers that seem to be obsessed with preaching against homosexuality. Now, let me say right up front that I do believe homosexuality is a sin. But what I want to challenge today is the way they speak against it. Uh, some of these preachers seem to um, not only spend an inordinate amount of time on that one subject, maybe 90% of their preaching is on that one type of sin, uh, but the way they preach about it, it seems to be the attitude is hateful, and maybe some of the signs or banners they hold, uh, the language on it is is uh, hateful. So uh, I'm going to ask them, and to, if you want to speak out against it, and uh, I do believe that is a good idea, uh, that at least you do it with a loving heart. Now, when I spoke to one of my fellow preachers about this subject, uh, he said, well, Luke, the problem is that the, the, the homosexuals, they have these gay pride parades. And can you, can you tell me any other group of sinners that have a parade celebrating their sin? I mean, do, do fornicators I have fornication pride parades? Do adulterers have adultery pride parades? Thieves don't have thief pride parades. The homosexuals are the only group that have parades to publicly celebrate their sin. Well, I thought that was an interesting point, uh, but maybe the reason I am more sensitive to this than some others would be is that my brother was homosexual. I say he was homosexual because he has died. And uh, when I was uh, a teenager and learned that my older brother was homosexual, I. Uh, I still loved him the same. And years later, when I became a Christian, I still loved my brother the same. But after I became a Christian, I, uh, I could not keep silent and pretend that, the, that homosexuality was not an issue and that it was just a perfectly acceptable alternative way of life. So my brother and I talked about it. And uh, then my brother got AIDS. He was one of the earliest AIDS victims. And uh, as the AIDS advanced and he grew closer to death, he turned to Jesus Christ and he was saved. So, um, that may be why I'm a little bit more sensitive than some of the other preachers about this subject, but I want to ask any homosexuals who are watching this video right now, let's take the question of homosexuality off the table just for a moment. Let's pretend that you were heterosexual. Well, I am certain that you are still guilty of some other sins, even if they're not sexual sins. For example, you know, did you ever lie, cheat, steal, hate, jealousy, envy? Come on, I know you're guilty of something. Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the point I'm making is, whether it's a sexual sin like homosexuality, or my sexual sins that I had, which was basically just being a promiscuous fornicator, um, even if we weren't sexual sinners, we still have other sins to convict us. The reason that's a problem is because the Bible says no sin is allowed in heaven. It says if you sin even one time, you're disqualified. You're not eligible for heaven. So, I've had homosexuals tell me that, you know, God made me this way. This is natural for me. Well, I don't believe God made you to be a homosexual. But I do believe that uh, homosexual desires do come naturally to you. 
And the reason I believe that is because God gave you and me a sin nature. Our nature is sinful. I should rephrase that. God didn't give me that sin nature. We have that as a result of the original sin from Adam and Eve. We've, we've inherited it. It's in our genes. Sin comes natural to us. But you have a natural desire for homosexual sin, and I have a natural desire for heterosexual sin. But just because it's natural for us doesn't mean that we should be doing it. So, I came across an interesting uh, YouTube site uh, yesterday, and it is Jesus is Freedom, and the young woman has two videos, uh, the, the title of the video is Jesus Set Me Free from Homosexuality. So I want to ask uh, any homosexuals, uh, if you're struggling with this, and you you want to change, go watch her videos. I'm sure that there are many others on YouTube that have similar testimonies about how Jesus changed them. Now, you cannot change yourself, whether it's any type of sin or a sexual type of sin. You can't change yourself. If you could change yourself, then it would have not have been necessary for Jesus to die on a cross for your sins and to have the Holy Spirit come into us to start changing us and making us a new person. So don't think that you can change yourself. You need Jesus Christ. So right now, I'm going to ask you to listen to the call Jesus is calling out now. He says, come and follow me. Right now, you're going down a path in your life. And you're, you're basically just living for yourself and doing your own thing. But Jesus says, come and follow me. So right now, turn around, turn to Jesus Christ, offer all your sins to Him and say, Jesus, only you can forgive my sins, my homosexuality, or any other sins that I have. And... And now I'm embracing you as God, Lord, and Savior. And now I am a follower of Jesus Christ. If you can do that, then Jesus will send His Holy Spirit into you. That's the Spirit of God. He will come and live inside you. And that's what happens when you get born again. The Spirit of God comes inside you and lives in you. Now, the Bible says that when you are born again, that you are a new creature. You're a new person. The Bible says that when you're born again, Jesus is in you and you are in Christ. The Bible says that your old ways are gone. All your ways will become new. Now, I know people who were born again and then the very next day, their life changed 180 degrees. They no longer had the desires for sin that they had in the past. And then I know other people who were born again, and the change in their lives was more gradual. It may have taken weeks or months or even years, but over time, the Holy Spirit living in them convicted them of their sin and changed the desires of their heart. The important thing for you is whether you are homosexual or not, that you turn to Jesus Christ and trust Him. And that is my prayer for you now, that you will turn to Jesus Christ and that some of you will be saved. In Jesus' name, Amen.